Beautiful day. <laughs> so hot here today. Oh my God, it's like 75 degrees. Where do you live again? We in New York, we in Tarrytown, like t That's 30 right. minutes from the city, from Manhattan. Oh, interesting. 70, so I'm coming to New York City next yeah. weekend, or next on Tuesday. Oh. I think we are live. Awesome. So oh, when you come, fire. we definitely should, should get together. Okay, yeah, so welcome Facebook Live. So I have a very cool surprise for you today. I have my friend Jenny Carr, and she's going to be talking about her amazing book, Piece of Cake. So welcome. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. Yes. So let me read your bio. So Jenny Carr is an anti-inflammatory health coach. She's an international best-selling author of the cook of the cookbook piece of cake the secret of anti-inflammatory diet she is a motivational speaker and a mom she specializes in helping people maintain an anti-inflammatory diet without deprivation and overwhelm jenny loves to take clients from pain and degeneration to empowerment health and vibrancy so welcome welcome I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, but yeah, what we were saying before. So if you're in New York City, we definitely need to meet because we never actually met in person. So I know, I know it would be yeah. so fun. So uh, yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about the book and what inspired you to make the book? I know we had a lot of people interested, you know, people were sharing and I'm going to post this later on my website and on my YouTube channel. So this is so amazing. I'm congratulating you. I know how hard it is to write a book. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. I love your support. It means the world. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, this this book probably very much like yours is just comes out of a lot of love right mm -hmm. and wanting to help people feel better um i have been an anti-inflammatory health coach for oh goodness about five years and mm -hmm. before that i practiced what i preach um for a good three years and trying to working on healing my own my own symptoms and also i know we're going to talk about kids but my um my son in particular had a lot of health issues. And so mm -hmm. I applied this to um, his life and he had incredible healing as well. Mm -hmm. And so the more I felt better and then I helped my family and my friends and I'm like, okay, there's really something to this. This is, it's not just by chance if it will work for you or not for you. This works for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's science. It's very concrete inflammation, you know, goes to the areas we're most susceptible to. And chronic inflammation affects all of us, or most of us. Um, and so I, I am experiencing both how my physical symptoms could heal and also how good you feel mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. when you shift up your diet. That was so huge for me. It was the pot of gold. Um, and that's what really inspired me to become an anti-inflammatory health coach. And then writing this book was, I just, my my goal, my dream is to reach as many people as mm -hmm. I can to help them heal. I just want to shout it out at the top of the mountain. I'm sure like you, right? Like it, this mm -hmm. changes your life and it's not that hard. And like you said, you don't have to be deprived. You don't have to feel overwhelmed. Um, there's an easy way to go about getting the chronic inflammation out of your body. So awesome. And that's why I started doing these interviews with my friends, entrepreneurs, other moms, uh, authors, other health, uh, health coaches, like I'm a health coach as well. And because, you know, we need, everybody needs to hear the message, you know, because the message, no matter, I feel like there's so many different diets, but the message is kind of the same, you know, avoid processed yeah. food, avoid, yeah. you know, processed sugar and, yeah. you know, all these different things, yeah. which we're going to talk about. And we are both teachers. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an, you know, my degree was in art education too so and i know you used to be oh, a teacher too so i didn't know that That's yeah awesome. yeah so it. so it's so funny so could you tell us a little bit actually can we actually maybe some viewers don't even know what is inflammation well maybe they'll be confused because you know sometimes totally. there's so much stuff going on yeah. on the internet so can you tell us yes yeah great question so there's two different types of inflammation mm -hmm. there's chronic inflammation and acute inflammation acute inflammation is when you sprain your ankle or you break your leg right mm -hmm. Um, where there's immediate swelling that goes to the place that was just injured and actually helps to support the healing mm -hmm. of that body, that area. Chronic inflammation, inflammation is more of this low-grade inflammation, and it happens the way we get inflamed um, chronically is typically through environmental toxins, 
through dehydration and not even dehydration, just not drinking enough water to push out the inflammation in cheers, our body. Cheers, my water. Yeah, yes, I know. Cheers. Yes, lemon water. I'm <laughs> drinking. I love water. Yes. So environmental toxins, not enough water, not enough movement, um, mm. diet, and stress. Those are the five major ways that inflammation, especially chronic inflammation, begins to attack our body. The thing about chronic inflammation is that it's not as acute. It's not as intense. We don't necessarily feel it. It creeps on at a really slow pace, right? It's like this smoldering fire that just starts to catch on here and there. And it's when you get to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, I've had this digestive condition for like six months now or a year, or I'm realizing that my, my knee has been like a bum knee for multiple years now and it affects me on either a daily, weekly, or sometimes even just monthly basis. But essentially chronic inflammation gives you a chronic symptom, right? Mm -hmm. And science has proven that inflammation is at the root of almost all ailments, conditions, and disease. That's a big statement to make. So autoimmune conditions, um, cancer, um, digestive disorders, IBS, chronic headaches, achy joints, um, even anxiety, depression is linked to chronic inflammation, really uh, skin conditions, anything again that's a chronic symptom that's less than ideal, typically, not always, but typically the root of that is coming from inflammation. Awesome. I think now people will understand and talking about inflammation, my husband yeah. was in a bike accident. So he actually broke his collarbone and, and his ribs. So he had an inflammation, you know, the first one you were saying. So yeah, it's like yeah. you have the swelling or if you swell the ankle, but this is more like inside. So sometimes it's hidden and people may not even realize it just to, in the beginning, I forgot to say it, a disclaimer, we are both not doctors. So this is for yes. information and educational all purposes only. We health coaches. So always, you know, talk to your doctor, med medical professional, you know, to check, uh, you know, what's going on. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, you know, just to, to be, you know, to, you know, to set things straight. Yes. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so he got the inflammation and now, uh, so you got inspired, you know, by your kids and also you had some issues with inflammation yourself. Yes. Yeah? So could you tell yes. us like, you know, what happened, you know, in the beginning, yeah. like your story? Totally. So it's kind of a, a two part story, almost three part. My son is, is one component. And, um, I'll tell you that first when he was, uh, when he was born the first year of his life, he was really sick. Like he got from every, I gave him vaccines and every live mm -hmm. vaccination, chicken pox or rotavirus, mm -hmm. he actually got the disease. Um, he had inflamed and, and, uh, infected adenoids and tonsils. He had so many ear infections. He was put on tons of antibiotics. And at this point, I didn't even know what the word inflammation meant, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was just trying to be the best mom that I could and help my kid and help him to eat and to feel okay and not to be in pain all the time. Um, and then he got reflux. And so it, it really was one thing after another, antibiotics for, anti, for the earaches. And then he ended up having his adenoids removed. He had his tonsils removed. Mm -hmm. He would get a cold and spike a fever of 105, 106 and have it for days and days and days, almost weeks sometimes. Like I had his doctor on speed dial and she literally would have me call her like every hour to make sure like, okay, where are we at now? Does he need, need to go, go to the hospital? It was really just living wow. on the edge and it was super stressful for me, um, both as a mom and then I was writing, trying to write sub plans as a teacher on the side and like take care of all my kids and um, it was not fun. And then he ended up when he had his tonsils removed, he still got real or his adenoids were removed. He still got really sick and we decided he needed to have his tonsils removed, but he was so young. There was no one in the town I live in who would take them out. So we had to go to Salt Lake city, which is a five hour drive away to the primary children's hospital. And we ended up being there for three weeks because he had the tonsils removed. Then he got RSV. He had a bladder infection, everything again that you can imagine mm -hmm. that happened. Like he, we ended up in ICU from the RSV. It was code blue. They were like hit, hit the code blue thing. And all of a sudden, like in 12 seconds, seven doctors surrounded us and were whisking him up to ICU. I had no idea what was going on. It was so scary. 
And so when I can we imagine, got home, my God, uh, it was awful. It was awful. And when we got home, within a little bit of time, we started to realize that he has a sensory condition. So he would sometimes have like a drop of water would fall on his shirt and it would it would hurt. It would literally hurt him. He would say, it hurts, it hurts. And he'd want to scream and tear and pull his shirt off. He, we live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where it's really cold in the winter. You have to put on many layers and get dressed up in your snow clothes. And he literally couldn't put layers on because it, it was so uncomfortable, right? Wow. So the sensory condition um, was really impacting his day-to-day living and learning and well-being. And so kind of simultaneously, I had started following an, an, this, an anti-inflammatory diet mm-hmm. and working with um, an anti-inflammatory health coach, specifically focused not on adding turmeric and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but more so taking out what was inflaming mm-hmm. me. And my mom, who had had Lyme disease for 20 years, had started doing the same thing, and she felt so amazing. She was healing for the first mm-hmm. time. She had sold her business 20 years, had been searching for something to help her heal. And for the first time in 20 years, she was actually healing. And she said, Jenny, um, you've got to try this because I, after all the stress from my son being sick and dealing, you know, living in the hospital, Mm -hmm. trying to be a teacher as well, um, I ended up getting, gaining a bunch of weight. I had digestive disorders. I was so tired. That's a big symptom of chronic Mm -hmm. inflammation is like extreme fatigue. Um, and that they actually tested me for cancer. And then they told me I was getting an autoimmune condition. They couldn't figure it out. And we, long story short, somewhat short, we ended up both adopting this anti-inflammatory protocol and the symptoms for me to- completely reversed. I was really depressed at the time that my depression went away. And for my son, what was so beautiful was when I first started eating this way, he would eat really clean with me at home, but then he'd go to school and eat you know, whatever food they were serving. When I made the commitment and I said, I am going to make you breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, snacks, all following this anti-inflammatory protocol and pack everything, his sensory condition literally improved by about 80% in three months. Wow. So he was functioning again. Um, and I was feeling so much better. And it really, it, it once again just proved that when we as moms take care of ourselves, right, mm-hmm. then we can be in a space where we can help the others. Had I not adopted the anti-inflammatory diet and living and mindfulness and lifestyle, right, components, mm-hmm. I never would have known what to have done with my son. And he could have been struggling so much still to this day. Wow, that's fantastic. What what an amazing story. And, and I'm so and that's me as a health coach, I say the same thing to to moms, because sometimes they like, Oh, I'm so busy, you know, or yeah. I don't have the money. You yeah. know, what can I do? But it's like diet, it's so important, and especially when you're doing as a family, it's mm-hmm. so much easier to follow, you know, a healthy, I don't even call it the lifestyle, I call it like a healthy lifestyle. I mean, not yeah. I don't call it the diet, but diet. a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Because it's easier when you're cooking, you know, you can cook in batches, you can free stuff you can share it with your friends family or bring yeah. it to school if you can and it and that's makes it so much easier than just like cooking for yourself that's so he was lucky that he had such a great mom that you were able you know to figure out and and yeah and ironically awesome. it was my mom that showed me yeah that was three generations there <laughs> so she's she's good she's doing good to your mom she is yeah she's yeah that, that's she hikes the, machu picchu a how old is your ago. son now my son's eight Oh, okay, so this was like a few years ago. You this know, was so. a number of years And ago. I know you have a daughter too, yes? So, Yeah, I have a daughter who um, is four. Mm-hmm. And I. The, so the other part of my story is that when I, um, I've traveled all over the world. I've been to every continent mm-hmm. except for Antarctica. I love traveling and always loved like adventure traveling, right? Like backpacking through Southeast Asia. My dad and I went fishing, fly fishing for peacock bass and um Golden Dorado down in the Amazon multiple times, like trekking through uh, all kinds of uh, different places, more, you know, um, down to earth type traveling. And what I found out when my daughter was born, um, about a year after my daughter was born, I got really, really sick with a parasite infection. Those are nasty. I I had uh, one too from Jamaica and I was sick for six months and no one knew what was wrong with me. So nasty. 
so awful. And yeah. I, I, like, same as you, I didn't know what was wrong with me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, because I took care of myself, I don't think the symptoms showed up as, as quickly as they mm-hmm. likely would have before, which was good on many hands, but on the opposite end, the parasites had been, some of them had been with me for so long. And mm-hmm. I, um, since I went to Africa when I was 16, how crazy wow. is that? Um, so over 20 years. And then with my, my dad, he actually got a bunch of parasites from down in the Amazon as well. So I know we got some down there mm-hmm. and they, they ended up putting holes in my intestines, um, wow. not only my intestines, but actually many of my organs and started to put me into org- organ failure. And when I found out that I had them finally, cause like you, I know like, because so hard, like you're going through so all this infection. Hard. This is sometimes they like, Oh no, you don't have any parasites. I know. I had so many people tell me that I don't have any parasites, mm-hmm. even though I even showed them the pictures. They're like, no way that those are too big. Those wouldn't mm-hmm. be parasites. Um, I, I had so many people tell me I didn't have parasites. And when I finally figured out that I did and started killing them, mm-hmm. when they die, you probably know this, they release neurotoxins, same mm-hmm. as Lyme, right? Um, it releases a neurotoxin and some are more intense than others. And there was this one in particular, this yucky red, oh, gross one. And it, when it died, I, it, I, my legs would become paralyzed. I would think words, but I couldn't speak. I couldn't get out of bed. I would spin like I had, you know, when you're in college or you're young, if you drink too much, you're partying and you like lie down and you're spinning, like that would happen for three weeks straight, no stopping. I had to army crawl to the bathroom. Like I literally felt like I was dying. I was scared. Um, and, and so that actually lasted. I am really just coming out of it this last five or six months since I started writing my book, um, have had amazing healing, but it took a solid three years of me doing everything I knew to do to save my life. Literally. I know. That's yeah. Those parasites are nasty. And to to make it, you know, uh, something some funny connection. You and my husband Bill, who's a cinematographer, you should talk because he's traveled around the world and he went to all this crazy unusual places, yeah. all different continents. Yeah. And he, I'm sure you can tell yourself different stories. And yeah, totally. he had some <laughs> parasite. I mean, he had like everything, oh, you know, possible. But yeah. yeah. So if you feel, you know, if you've been to all these tropical places or something, yeah, make sure that the viewers, you know, check yourself, you know, for parasites, go, go into in, infection, disease, you know, doctors and keep checking and checking because sometimes it's very hard to, you know, to find out actually what's what's going on. And that's why uh, I'm sure you as a coach, you know, because sometimes I feel like some coaches are like, oh, you know, this is let's just go like natural way. But you know, doctors are amazing and medicine these days are it's amazing. So, you know, have you know, approach from both sides, you know, holistic, you know, looking at the whole body, you know, you can do like a acupuncture, you know, Chinese doc- doctor, but also, you know, go to like regular doctor and go to many doctors because sometimes it's very hard to figure out figure out what's going yeah. on, like, you know, with your son or with, you know, with you. I just helped one of my clients um find out that she has Lyme and parasites mm-hmm. that have been causing illnesses for mo- most of her life and she mm-hmm. she thought she was gonna have to have her thyroid cut out um oh. possibly you know like it just it, again like it, parasites bacteria they cause inflammation mm-hmm. and it goes to areas you're most susceptible to so sometimes you think you're having hormonal imbalance that's actually mm-hmm. what i thought was going on with me i was bloated irritable and tired mm-hmm. and slowly gaining weight and i'm like nothing had changed I, my diet hadn't changed my exercise and i'm like this is so weird my hormones must be out of whack And then when my dad got tested with this person, she actually uses vibrational frequency set on specific settings that correlate with Mm -hmm. the different types of parasites. That's how we found out finally that we had them. So if anyone watching is like, oh, I don't know if I have Lyme or parasites, I really think it's more common than they realize. And if you write parasites in the uh, comments below, I'm happy to connect with you and kind of help guide you on a some good doctors to connect with. Yeah, so yeah, doctors are awesome. But um, so um, what, like, so we know what inflammation is. So what, now everybody's like, so okay, so what can we no eat? Way. I know you, yeah. you're talking a lot like me, uh, you know, letting maybe sometimes maybe it could be, gl- you know, gluten, you know, get, you know, get rid of gluten, eat like gluten free stuff. So let's talk about this, you know, sugar, you know, so what it. are your some key points that people, you know, even if they didn't have the parasites, but they may be feeling, maybe I have inflammation, what they can do, like hands-on tips. Parasites aside, right? Anytime that you have a chronic um, ailment, if you are doing complementary medicine, 
if you eat an anti-inflammatory diet, that complementary medicine is 10 times more mm -hmm. effective. Like time and time and again, I see with my clients, they'll, they'll be eating really, really clean, really taking care, following that anti-inflammatory lifestyle. And whether it's Western or alternative medicine treatments, they heal so much quicker. So it's really cool to watch that. Um, now the, the foods, right? Like what do you eat? I I'm love turmeric and I love spices, but I don't believe that adding those to your diet is like the solution to everything, mm -hmm. right? Like that's like the sugar, or the, so to speak, the sugar on top, the cherry on top. Um, what I have found to be most effective, I really focus on people getting the best bang for their buck is to remove the inflammatory foods, remove the inflammation. Which are? Which are, mm -hmm. drum roll. So processed sugar is the number one most inflammatory food. And, and the most yeah. addicting. Sugar is more addictive than heroin, they did studies. I mean, totally. so, yes. so addictive. Yes, super addictive. And the tricky part is that there's over 50 names for processed sugar. Mm -hmm. And some of them sound really healthy, like brown rice syrup or beet mm -hmm. sugar or... Um, uh, I'm trying to think and I'm going blank, but there's organic corn, cane I mean, sugar, corn, right? I mean, there's all this, yeah, like there's so many different names. And so it becomes very confusing and the health industry has become really, really brilliant at marketing health mm -hmm. food products and making you like you buy a bar or you buy something and you're thinking, this is so good for me. Like it's super expensive, but that's okay. I'm giving myself health. Right. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, if you read the ingredients, even if it's gluten free or mm -hmm. all natural or vegan or whatever, or vegan, like, yeah, yeah, like, like paleo. They these, yeah, they put these buzzwords yeah. in and there's almost always some other inflammatory yeah. ingredient that they've added in to make it taste good and to make it addictive. Mm -hmm. And then you're so what becomes very frustrating is you're like, I'm doing all this stuff for myself. I'm eating really clean. Mm -hmm. I'm eating really healthfully. Why do I still feel like crap? There's a missing piece, right? There's a missing component. There's mm -hmm. still something that's inflammatory. So what do we want to look for? Mm -hmm. I often talk about the top six inflammatory foods. And so processed sugar being number one, and it's really tied with alcohol. Wow. They usually say I hope them. my husband <laughs> is listening because he likes to have some cocktail <laughs> at the end of the day. It's adults to get rid of often. Um, and in my book, I talk about some great swaps and like how to deal with that when you're in social settings or you just want to unwind and relax at the end of the day. But processed sugar and alcohol are the two top inflammatory foods. Mm -hmm. And then next, um, I talk about, yes, gluten, but I don't even know if it's gluten as much as mm -hmm. just modernized. Gluten. Yeah, because yes. it's all like GMO and pesticides. Yeah, it's completely I've talked about Ooh. about this in my upcoming book, too, because it's yeah, it's like the food is not like it used to be, you know, like our yeah. grandparents used to eat. It's, everything yeah. is Process. Totally. It's, a, it's a food like product, mm -hmm. right? And the DNA has changed so much. What our body actually will scan the food that we eat it, it'll scan the DNA. And if it doesn't recognize the DNA, it, it considers it as an invader. Mm -hmm. So when we're eating these genetically modified foods, which is also one of the top inflammatory foods I talk about, um, our body is, we think we're eating something that has some sort of, you know, value and nutritional density to it. And really, our body's like, red alert, red alert, invader, invader, inflammation comes on, the immune system gets oversuppressed, and we then um, struggle with more chronic health conditions. So the other thing with um, modernized wheat is just the way it's processed, mm -hmm. right? It's processed. It's so highly processed. Again, our body doesn't recognize it very well um, on a molecular level. And then last is... The, speaking to the gluten specifically, if you look at it, the, I have a picture in my book, but if you look at... Um, Your book is awesome. Yeah, oh, everybody get her, go get her book. It's so awesome. Thank you so much. There's, if you, there's a picture of ancient sprouted wheat, like mm -hmm. an ancient wheat grain, and then modernized wheat. And the ancient wheat plant looks like this, like, kind of scrawny looking, somewhat small, right, tough looking plant. And then the modernized wheat plant is like this puffy, beautiful, fluffy plant. And that's the fluffiness is the gluten that's been mm -hmm. like, you see, imagine like an engineer scientist, like shooting gluten into the plant. That's essentially what happens. And it's because it's so much gluten 
that's what's happened. It's not that like low trace amounts of gluten are typically okay for most people, unless you're celiac or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just that we're so overexposed to gluten now with modernized wheat that that's what's causing a major issue in my belief. Um, so long story short, <laughs> modernized wheat, that is one of the top inflammatory foods, the processed sugar, the alcohol, the GMOs, um, cow dairy, cow dairy is inflammatory for almost every person, actually for every person I've ever worked with. And the reason being is multiple. Um, number one, most of them are fed corn and soy, which are the two most genetically modified foods on this planet. So the inflammation from the GMO is going into the animal. We then end up eating that, right? It goes into the milk. We eat it. Um, it's the protein molecule is much larger than what we can typically digest. We can handle those, uh, that large of a protein molecule until around the age of three or four, in which time our body starts to decrease the amount of digestive enzymes that it produces because from an evolutionary standpoint, a long time ago, we used to nurse our kids until they were three or four, right? So they, our body naturally produces mm -hmm. more digestive enzymes. Um, and then of course, all the antibiotics and hormones that they give animals these days and cows is just not good for us. So um, cow dairy, and then the last is Ah, inflammatory oils, which oh, there's so many of them. Most canola common, oil, 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 canola oil. Yeah. Um, it's in everything. In every canola. I mean, everything. if people look at the like in the, at the labels, you you go to like Whole Foods or any like you know this Whole Foods stores, and you're buying this organic. You know, yeah. you think it's healthy, gluten free, yeah. Yeah, blah blah totally. blah stuff. And then I look at the ingredients, and the, like the third one is canola oil or canola sunflower oil. oil, sunflower oil. It's like I know. Avoid it. I know. Avoid it. And so like sunflower oil, sunflower oil, seed oils, when they're heated, they become really mm -hmm. inflammatory. And, and they're carcinogenic, food, but that's another story. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And in almost all processed foods, they're usually heated. So mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like processed sugar where there's so many different types of oils that are inflammatory. Mm -hmm. I like to kind of think of like, well, what can I eat? Right. So extra, extra virgin coconut oil is fabulous for mm -hmm. you. Extra virgin olive oil. Um, even avocado oil is really good. And really, those are the only oils. Cold press. Cold press, of course. Yes, cold, cold press. press, yeah. yeah and, that's really important, yes. And get organic, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Get organic. Um, so that's that's where I get my oils from. And then you could do like a flax seed or something like that, but you don't want to cook with those, right? Because yes. again, that's a seed, and if, it, if it's heated, it becomes inflammatory. Um, and then, so all of that, if those of you listening, does that sound a little bit overwhelming? Yeah, so, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, when I talk to my clients today, like, okay, so what can I eat? Yeah. I'm yeah, like, totally. fruits and vegetables, you oh, know, yeah. fruits and vegetables. You can never go wrong with fruits and vegetables <laughs> and plants. I always say, like, what look what, like, the squirrel will eat outside or rabbit or, like, you know, in the nature. Like, they wouldn't go and, like, get chips <laughs> or, like, or cookies or something unless you're, like, feeding, you know, people. But yeah. it's, like, common sense like but now like you said the food is not food it's pro it's like food like pro i mean produce when you go to the supermarket it's aisles and aisles everything is packaged everything is in containers it's beautifully packaged and kids yeah. are so so yeah. you know drawn to that because they they especially you know designing you know so it's exciting now halloween is coming so all the kids are like candy yeah so what can yeah from i i, I mean i've seen your book but like what people so what do you recommend what people can eat like so and okay kids? so here Here's, here's my simplified, this is my secret to an anti -inflammatory What's your diet. secret? My secret. Um, when I tell you, okay, you're going to follow an anti-inflammatory diet and you're going to stay away from processed sugar, from alcohol, mm -hmm. from wheat, from cow dairy, from inflammatory oils, from GMOs, you're like, whoa, that's super overwhelming. I have a ninja move that allows for you to drop most of those inflammatory foods by focusing on only one food, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you focus on being like a renegade researcher and really taking the processed sugar out of your diet, by default, almost all of those inflammatory foods that we just discussed will fall to the wayside. There may be a couple things that fall in here or there. And as you heal and get better about reading ingredients, like you're like, oh, here's the next step I want to take. But most of the foods, most of those inflammatory foods, if you really truly take out processed sugar, will fall to the wayside. Now, 
when I say take out processed sugar, I'm not just talking about no longer eating the cupcakes or the cookies or the obvious sugars, right? I'm also talking about reading the ingredients mm -hmm. so that you can see the hidden sugars. So I teach workshops um, often and I taught a workshop, I remember a couple of years ago, and I challenge everyone in the workshop, okay, this week we're gonna take, we're gonna become renegade researchers, we're gonna take out processed sugar, um, we're gonna read the ingredients and figure out like, is there a workaround, is there a food swap? And if not, like, don't eat it, come back to me and we'll find you a food swap. <laughs> I'm the queen of food swaps. And so um, I remember this woman, she wrote me that night and she was like in panic. She's like, I am so upset, I am so upset. I went to buy my, my favorite organic soup and there was sugar in it. And then I went to go buy this bread and there was sugar in it. And then I went to go buy like a seasoning for some, you know, something else. And there was sugar in it. Like she's like, there's sugar in everything. Things that you would never mm -hmm. guess that there is. And so that really is my challenge to all of you listening to, um, to everyone reading my book is to, read the ingredients, get to know those 50 names of processed sugar, not memorize, but it's like find patterns, like anything that ends in oats, right? Like fructose um, or things that end in syrup, like molotol syrup or brown rice syrup um, or anything that ends in oil, like molotol. Um, and, and so you can just, if you just read over those names of, of 50 process, uh, 50 names of processed sugar, you can get a sense of what it sounds like, what those names sound like. And so when you read the ingredients, you want to stay away from anything with the processed sugar. So, and, and the best is to like, if you can make your own food, yes, make oh, from scratch. Course. That's yeah. what I always uh, That's tell my, my clients and I do it myself because, you know, it's then you actually know what you're eating because yeah. you know what, what you're putting. Exactly. And, and do you cook and with your kids? They I like cook with my kids and here's the challenge, right? My kids are kids, they're four and eight, mm -hmm. and they totally want to have cakes and cupcakes mm -hmm. and they want to have- Of course, I mean, they the kids. Want... Yes, and so what I, like my zone of genius is finding food swaps for any food that you want, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that you can create anti-inflammatory foods with non-inflammatory ingredients. So I, my book is, has a ton of desserts, it has Mm -hmm. Comfort. Food. I love the name. I mean, pizza is it's such a genius name. Piece of cake. Like, <laughs> yeah, piece you. of cake and piece yeah, of cake. Exactly. Yeah, literally yeah. both. Um, and so, like, you might use coconut flour or mm -hmm. almond flour instead of processed wheat. You, instead of using a processed sugar, you might use a raw honey or maple syrup or unrefined coconut sugar. Um, you might use stevia. People ask me about agave all the time. And if, if agave is processed, similar to honey, if it's heated up, mm -hmm. it becomes inflammatory, but if it's raw, it's mm -hmm. good. Um, you know, I use, if I use eggs, I know your clients, or you speak to vegan, right? I mean, I speak, you know, to everybody. I call so it the rainbow. I okay. mean, I, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. vegan myself. So okay. both like my husband, he eats, you know, but yeah, it's everybody, I, I always say everybody should follow their own path. And you know, totally. like, listen you to know, your body. So. Everyone is unique and yeah. each person, it's all about listening to your body. So if you do eggs, I recommend like free range eggs, right? Mm -hmm. Where they they eat the grass and the grubs that are running around. Mm -hmm. um, and if, instead of butter or vegetable oil for a cake, I would use coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Like you can totally mm -hmm. swap everything out yes. and make these delicious treats. Um, that's what I've had to learn to do. And what I find is that that is more easily maintainable for mm -hmm. most people. When they have, when they're, when it's like, oh, okay. I can maintain this lifestyle if I know that I can still have a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. It's just not an inflammatory birthday cake, it's, mm -hmm. but it's delicious, right? Mm -hmm. Or I know that like I can still make a pizza, even though the crust might be like coconut flour, almond flour, coconut oil, some eggs, some sea salt, some garlic. Um, the use a tomato sauce without sugar, which by the way you can even buy at the grocery store. It's tomato basil, um, Cadia brand, and some some goat cheese. Right. You can there's like mozzarella goat cheese that you can buy that's delicious and you can grate it and you can melt and put a bunch of delicious veggies on there. And there you go. Like you can have pizza like you can actually have these foods. Yes. Um, and I so make a lot of raw cheese know. from nuts or like from seeds you can make, you know, if you're vegan or totally, so. 
There's totally. so many options. There's so many options. Yes. Um, and so I think, yeah, just having, um, having that so that you don't feel ever deprived. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I I never want my, my kids to feel deprived Mm -hmm. because what will happen is they'll get into middle school and Mm -hmm. high school and they'll be like, forget this. I'm going to eat like crap. Right. And they They go to like parties or they have even parties at school and, and they want to do what other peers are doing because, you know, kids are kids. They like to copy each other. So yeah, exactly. So I have an awesome kid's story. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, sure. Okay. And if anybody yeah. has questions, please post your questions that we can answer at the end. I don't yeah. know if you see them. Sometimes I do see them. Sometimes I don't. So, uh, yeah, tell us your, your story. Okay, good. Yeah, I can't see them. So if any questions come up. Yeah, let me let see. Know. I think I see some. Oh, my God. I, there's people saying something. Hold on. This is so you go ahead and I'm going to try to read okay. them. So my great kid's story, right, and it has to do with Halloween. When my son, I told you my son was really sick, and around one and a half is when we started to really implement, like 100% of the time he's eating anti-inflammatory. And the way that that happened was through discussion. With a one and a half year old, at one and a half years of age, I started talking to Tosh about how our body feels when we eat some foods versus how it feels when we don't eat inflammatory foods what makes our body feel yucky, what makes it feel like Mm -hmm. strong and fast, Mm -hmm. right? And I said, mommy's felt so much better. Again, goes back to our own self-care. Mommy feels so much better. And I really want to help you so that you don't have an upset tummy or you don't get cold, you know, to go back to the hospital, which was a big one um, for him. And so, but I'm going to make sure that anything you want, I'm going to make it for you. And we're going to have a really yummy, yummy kind. It's just going to be a little bit different, right? So if you want a cookie, I'll make you a cookie. If you want like pancakes, I'll make you pancakes. It's just going to be a little different than the one we normally have. And so we start doing that. And if he, I remember like he would want to go to a birthday party and have a piece of cake. And so at that time I would say, all right, bud, you can choose to have a piece of cake. And I really want you to pay attention to how your body feels. Does your tummy hurt afterwards? Does it feel yucky? It's hard to make good choices. By the way, these inflammatory foods make a huge difference behaviorally in kids, Mm -hmm. not just kids, all of us, but we really Mm -hmm. notice it in kids. And so I'd say it's really hard to make good choices and be a good listener if you eat this. And he'd say, I don't care, mommy, I want to. Okay, all right, cool. So we go, he'd have the cake, and like 30 minutes later, I'd be like, how's your tummy feel, sweetie? Oh, it doesn't feel good, mommy. I'm like, I'm sorry. And, you know, there's nothing punitive. It's so, mm-hmm. like, understanding that this is a great way to talk with him. Like, I'm so sorry. I know it doesn't feel good. Do you remember how we talked about how those foods mm-hmm. make our body hurt? What do you think we want to do next time? Like, should we make our own cake and bring it here? Or um, one of the tricks I do is I, I kind of feel like going to a birthday party and getting a piece of cake is like a gift right? Like they're gifting mm-hmm. you this special treat. So the other thing I offered is do you want to go get like a cool toy instead of having a piece of cake. Awesome idea because sometimes they just want to get something. It doesn't totally. have to be yeah. you know, a candy. Feel, I don't want them yeah. to feel left out. I don't want them to feel deprived. So at two years of age, right? We started having these conversations mm-hmm. around one and a half. At two years of age, it was Halloween. He was, he was too. It was Halloween. And he told me there was no discussion about this. He just in the car, I remember so vividly, on the picked him up from school and he said, Mom, I'm only going to have two pieces of candy. And Tootsie Rolls were his very favorite when he was two. I'm only going to have two pieces of Tootsie Rolls because I know it hurts my tummy on Halloween. And I was like, okay. Like, that's, I can't believe you're, like, that's amazing. If that's what you want to do, that's Mm -hmm. awesome. And I was like, buddy, how about this? And this is still my trick to the day. My kids love it. For anyone with kids trying to figure out what to do on Halloween, I want trick-or-treating to be so fun, right? I don't Mm -hmm. want them to be like, oh, this is lame because I don't get to eat the candy. Like, this is boring. So I tell them, the more candy you get, the more trick-or-treating houses you get to, the more candy you get, it's going to be like money. And you can hand it in to me for a prize, like a toy. And the more you get, the bigger toy you have, right? So if you just get a little candy, like it'll be a smaller toy. If you have a middle amount, it's a medium toy. If you get a big amount, Mm -hmm. you get a big toy. And so the kids are like so motivated and so jazzed and super excited to go trick or treating. It does not take any of the fun out. And they, they then um, get to trade it in for a toy, just like they're buying something. So it's like, it's like a, 
bank or like a casino they give you like you know uh or if you go to like a carnival or something yes. i love it because i'm all about you know i'm a teacher uh i love art i'm a, i'm very creative so i i even tell this to my clients don't take it like you have to suffer and you you know like you you depriving yourself something think of like a game like that's exactly what you're doing with yeah. the kids to make it excited yeah. and then you you can be like a detective like even reading the labels like you know like we talked about before okay. but to make it you know to make it fun or you know to exchange for something else which is actually helpful or or if people giving away you know uh, have a lot of trick or cheaters you can give them like arts little you know arts uh, sets with like crayons or a book yeah. or coloring book instead of yeah. can't you know so you know okay. there's there are always options of you know for that and like like we, we, even with McDonald's, McDonald's you know they always have the toy like you know the, mm -hmm. the set because you know they want they trigger you know they it's want to trigger toys. the little kids because you know they don't know any better if you go to supermarket or any like pharmacy on the level of little kids there's chewing gums bubble gums you know because and they always mom can I have this and I always yeah. see I don't have kids myself but uh you know the kid that's what they want and they're usually yeah. hungry actually my our store even now has a little snacks like bananas and oranges mm -hmm, for for mm -hmm. kids which is awesome you yeah. know instead of yeah. but yeah the, those companies they know exactly how to trigger you know those little kids so moms you need to be smart dads you know so you always have to think ahead like you that's genius that you exchanging the candies for for toys it's so fun and you know so we do it at halloween we do it um anytime they just mm -hmm. know like i last year my kids finished swim lessons and they got from their instructor like a certificate that's a great mm -hmm. job and a bag full of candy i was like of this course is so ironic but okay and they just immediately said here you go mom let's go get a toy mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just they they're more excited about that you know and the kids like there is for sure that strong addiction to sugar but once they mm -hmm. clean it out and by the way it takes two weeks 10 to 14 days for processed sugar to be pushed out of your body, assuming you don't eat anymore. So you have a piece of candy, so you have a candy bar on Monday, it's two weeks from Monday, assuming you don't eat any more processed sugar for you to fully push it, all the inflammation from it out of your body. That's how chronic inflammation builds up so much. Cause mm -hmm. when do we ever wait two weeks to eat more no. processed sugar? Like it's and, more like two hours or two days. And it <laughs> takes about like 19, 20 times for the taste buds, you know, to try something new and actually yeah. like something. Like somebody's not accustomed eating fruits and vegetables. Of course, they know if you eat an apple, they know you're not going to jump for joy because yeah. you're craving maybe soda or cookies or all this, oh, you know, McDonald's burgers, you know. So you have to take yeah. time and maybe make variation slowly, slowly, you know, adjusting. And, and that's where this food swapping idea comes mm -hmm. from, right? That's where like, that's why my cookbook, it's not salads. It's not like your typical anti- Like my cookbooks are salads. Yeah, yeah, buy both of them, right? Like you, you've got the salads, you've got all that covered. Like mine is like yeah. cakes and lasagnas and cupcakes and muffins mm -hmm. and pancakes and like, but it's all using non-inflammatory mm -hmm. ingredients. So that mm -hmm. that awkward time in between you have something that satisfies you. Mm -hmm. No, your book is awesome. And you have a lot of research to, you know, yeah. backing up with, with everything. That's so great. We have some comments. So Jennifer was saying that uh, she loves your book. Then my husband Bill saying he's listening and he's drinking kombucha and kombucha has sugar oh, too, yeah. because, but you know, it's not as bad. He says he can have it, you know, if you want to have an alcohol, you know, instead of alcohol, yes. you can have kombucha. Totally. So, you know, that's there's, my yeah. trick. And what's Let's important see. to know about kombucha is it's fermented with processed yeah. sugar, but it changes molecularly yeah. and doesn't cause in inflammation. However, many kombuchas add mm -hmm. juice concentrate, which by the way, I didn't mention juice concentrate mm -hmm. sounds super healthy and benign. It's a processed sugar. So they'll add processed sugar afterwards. But if you buy, um, I think it's the Synergy brand, mm -hmm. kombucha yeah. Synergy, typically there's no added sugar mm -hmm. after the fermentation process. And because Fun it's fact. fermented, so actually it's a good bacteria. So. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. my favorite thing to do. And I'll pour yeah. like a cold pressed coconut water or mm -hmm. a kombucha in a wine glass. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun. Is there something about like holding? Yeah. You feel like you're having a cocktail. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and um, well, let me see. I I'm looking at my question. So uh, uh, somebody says parasites and um, information was very interesting. So they're gonna check that. And let okay. me see what else do I want to ask you. Uh, so uh, what's 
what's next for you? Like, you, so you're launching this book. I mean, you had this, we had a conversation before, but that I think we're going to have maybe one time another uh, interview about like bookmaking behind yeah. the scenes, because that's going to be like another conversation between <laughs> us, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's like for those that's who are excited, like, you know, how can they can find your book? And uh, I mean, yeah. this is not the end, but just, you know, like when people can get your book, it's, it's on, on Amazon. Where is it on your yeah, website? So, um, my book is on Amazon. You can buy it on Kindle now. It won't, it'll be available probably February, March from me, like from my website um, for purchase. It will not be available for purchase on Amazon, the hardcover for a year from now. And that's because super exciting. I had a major New York publisher p- pick up my Yay, book. Which is uh, huge. Oh my God. I'm so happy. For it you. is really huge. Um, Morgan James out of New York city. And the way they do it, it'll be in uh, major bookstores all, all around the country, Barnes wow. and Nobles, all, you know. Um, and so they want to ha- make sure the hard copy is in those bookstores mm-hmm. before you can get the hard copy on the Amazon. So for right now, I want to hook up all of our listeners, anyone that watches this, if you just write free book in the comments below, either on my site, Jenny Carr, or on Alenko's site, I will send you a PM personal message and I will actually send you a free copy of the book. Yeah. And get it because there's so much information. You need that. You need it for yourself, for your family. Holidays are coming. There's going to be a lot of temptations. Yes. So, you know, you know, I usually tell people eat before you go or bring your favorite dish, which you can bring an anti-inflammatory dish, anti-inflammatory cupcakes or cake with you and share it, you know, and educate others. And I've talked a lot about like the the sweets, but I have breakfast, lunch, dinner, mm-hmm. dessert, and snacks in my um, cookbook. So I've got yeah, you have a lot. You have a lot day. of awesome, awesome. Re- yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, I also want to just like to change the topic for a second. I ask all my all, all my um, all my um, uh, interview uh, people who are interviewed this question what so you're getting two questions so you can answer it whichever you want so what is your favorite thing to do that maybe we don't know even if we know you like your hobby and the second one if you can meet anybody in the world from the past from the future from now famous not famous who would it be and what would you do what 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 would you want to do with them so oh that's so fun well I'll tell you that one of my favorite pastimes I've been a cross-country ski racer my whole life wow um, I skied at University of New Hampshire and their Division I um, team and then came back home. I coached here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming for their ski team. And like I said, I was really, I mean, I was deathly ill for the wow. majority of the last three years. I couldn't get out of bed, would in bed for weeks and weeks at a time. Like, I, if you are want to hear more about it, the first two chapters of my book talk more about it. But um, it was a really scary time. And I, Connecting with nature is my thing. Like I climb mountains, ski, backcountry ski, cross-country ski, hike, bike, all of that. And I haven't really been able to do that um, over the last few years because I've just literally had mm-hmm. just been See, we're not feeling good so much of the time. So I'm so excited because I'm feeling so good. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. So fast. And I am so jazzed to start cross-country skiing again this winter. And um, my son, who's eight, is on the cross-country ski team, so I'll be skiing with him. Um, so that'll be really, really fun. Probably what That's I'm most awesome. excited for. So you, yeah. uh, so you, a uh, huge believer of you know spending time in nature. Me too. I mean, nature is my oh. favorite inspiration. I love nature. Actually, I dedicated my first book, Rough Wood Art. It was designed by Four Seasons. It's like, yeah, I love nature. So oh. that's awesome. I'm very bad skier. I, I tried a few times. Um, the cross country is not bad, but the skiing, yeah. like downhill, I was so scared. <laughs> Yeah, well, my but... husband's a downhill ski racer. My daughter loves downhill skiing. She's so, wow. and so does my son. But we both kind of, Tosh loves to cross country ski too. So we both kind of lucked out in that. Um, but yeah, it is, it's nature is, I think, one of the most grounding things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really easy for us to be out of our body, especially when you have a chronic condition. It's something mm-hmm. I've learned a lot about recently due to a good friend, Tamara Arnold, who, works with people coming kind of who get out of their body. Um, and it's she, the way she described it to me was so great, right? She said, if you, if we leave our body, cause we have a chronic illness, we don't feel mm-hmm. good. Like we don't want to feel that we don't, or if we're mm-hmm. depressed, like we don't want to be in our body. We don't like our body. We don't. And so we leave it, right. We're just not in our body. And she was like, it's kind of like abandoning a house. 
And when you have an abandoned house, all of a sudden, like mice and rats and termites, mm -hmm. like all these invaders come in and like there's plenty of room for them to stay. And so one of my big epiphanies was really coming into my body, not only for my own health so that there's no room for invaders. I don't want those parasites in there. Um, but there's also this incredible sense of grounding, right? So meditation or going for walks in nature, just sitting in nature, going for runs, bikes, like anything in nature is it just really helps to bring you into your body. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I do the same. And and talking about, you know, feel, feeling like when, especially when you're sick or when something is going on, you know, it could be stress or even like, you know, inflammation or could be, you know, an accident or even depression, you know, sometimes people yeah. actually crave and self sabotage and they were eating actually the foods they're not supposed to be eating or drinking oh, alcohol, sure. you know, all these oh, addictions yeah. because we just, we just want to numb ourselves. So I oh, think yeah. that meditation or going to the nature or doing yoga or mm -hmm. dancing or whatever you like, you know, skiing, you know, I don't yeah. know, dancing, riding a bicycle is the best because then you actually, you know, you know, sweat out all the toxins and you kind of for, you know forgetting about your sorrow so yeah like, absolutely and in my book I have a chapter on like my three tried and true ways to stop cravings in their tracks so mm -hmm. if, if cravings is something that happens mm -hmm. if it's whether you're trying you're you know you're depressed or anxious or um, just not happy with where you're in, you are in life or you're feeling so much pain in your body so you want to just eat things because either you mm -hmm. deserve it right that's mm -hmm. the story we tell ourselves a lot or you want to just numb that have that comfort that immediate comfort check out um, the chapter in my book how to stop cravings in their tracks because it is 100 percent works if you follow it mm -hmm. all the time yeah, and your book is like so hands on and it's and it's real because you've you've lived it, your kids live, you know, through that. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, something that you not just, you know, just, you know, that you just wrote a book because this is a popular topic or something like this, but this is actually something you experience and you you're living proof that, you know, that this this works. So, okay, so question number 2, if you yeah. could meet this person, whatever person, who would that be and that's why? A, that's a tough question. Honestly, I think it would be my future self. Like really Wow, I love it. This this whole process has been like my this whole process, my my adult life of mm -hmm. having my kids, my world of being a teacher for 10 years and dealing with my son who had that chronic sickness and then my own health and mm -hmm. be, and becoming an anti-inflammatory health coach, writing a book, publishing it, becoming a bestseller. Like all of this has just stretched me so much every day. I try to show up to be the person who's helped thousands and millions of people gain health and vibrancy, people who have freedom from inflammation. And I, I'm not really sure what that looks like, right? So it's just every day trying to show up and be as real as I possibly can. And when I feel out of my comfort zone, pushing through it, because I think you and I both know um, magic happens when we just take one step outside of our mm -hmm. comfort zone. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm super, it would be fun to meet me in 10 or 20 years from now and just see what that's, wisdom I would could share with myself now. <laughs> that's fantastic. And, and I've been talking to my, uh, friend, Marina Jacoby before, and we were talking about quantum physics, how everything is connected. And there are yeah. so many like timelines totally. that actually you can jump like in another timeline. So maybe in your, one of your meditations or something on, or, or lucid dreaming, you can actually do that. That would yeah. be fun. Wow. I, I, I love that. that. Out. I should try it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you should definitely try it. Uh, yeah. That's so awesome. Let me see what else. So, um, we already touched a little bit about that. So, you know, we, people get, you know, so they figure that they have inflammation, you know, that they maybe need help. They buy your book, then, then they, uh, you know, trying different recipes. And I think the key with everything, you know, if, if somebody wants to lose weight or if somebody has addictions or whatever, you know, yeah. it's to maintain. Yes. How do we maintain the lifestyle, the, the diet? I think, yeah. So can you touch that worth, a little bit on that? It's, it's where so many people fall down, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not as a judgment to them by any means. It's just the gap between knowledge and action is it can be so big sometimes. It's one thing to know it and to try things on here and there. It's another thing to like be in integrity and in alignment and to really try things on um, completely so that you can feel like the biggest shifts possible. So, um, the maintenance component is for me 
I help my clients figure out like the lifestyle that they have and how to integrate mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory living into their lifestyle, right? There may be some shifts that need to make that you may want to make in your lifestyle, but if we ha if we say like, okay, this is your life and you have to totally change it in order to heal, more than likely you're not going to maintain that. But if we can find mm -hmm. some nuance, some subtle shifts that make a really big impact, that's what I'm all about. And then again, finding the foods, like we're creatures of habit. So if, if I know the kinds of foods that you typically eat, I can always find a food swap. I can always find something that satisfies you, but also doesn't add to the chronic inflammation in your, in your body. Mm -hmm. And I think so, that's the key to maintaining. Yeah. And I, I always say this to myself or, or, or yeah. to clients, you know, that you are where you are and that's okay. And sometimes... And sometimes, you know, we fail, you, we self-sabotage. And actually, this can be actually very educational for us or even inspirational for others. Because sometimes, you know, when you see these people, you know, these personas or maybe like movie stars or all these famous people on, on you know, on TV and it's like all perfect. It's not real. Not, nobody is perfect. And okay. actually, you know, like just give yourself, you know, a break. And, you know, it's okay. You know, we, we, we're humans. And sometimes... Yeah. You know, sometimes we crave different things. So, so it's, it's, we it's are okay. Human, and I, I always say, like, to me, failure, if we're talking about, like, you know, oh, I fell off the wagon and ate, mm -hmm. I don't know, I ate some, I don't know, I ate a Big Mac. <laughs> I ate an ice cream cone or whatever it may be, right? I had a glass of wine. It's just an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. And the other really big component of my book that I, I work with my clients so much on is learning how to listen to our bodies because our mm -hmm. bodies are the most intelligent vessels. They're, they, and they speak to us. They tell us what works. They tell us how we can heal if we listen. Mm -hmm. But so often we take our, you know, we have a headache or we have a knee ache and we take Tylenol or ibuprofen or our mm -hmm. stomach is upset, we take pepto -bismol, we num, 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 num it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to listen to that because we want to get on with our life. What if you could get on with your life and get at the root of the issue so that it goes away and you don't have to put time and energy into thinking like, oh, here I am again, like where's the nearest bathroom? Or I can't do the running and athletes, athletic things I want to because my knee is always hurting or you know, I can't play with my grandkids because I just, I, I can't, I have such low energy or whatever it may be. Inflammation can really, chronic inflammation can stop you enjoying the life that you want to live. And there is a way to gain freedom from that. Yeah, that, that this is so awesome. And um, for like, for people who have kids and maybe they pick it, pick it eaters. Yeah. Any, I mean, we already touched a little bit on that, but yeah. Um, I, I really, truly think a couple of things. Number one, get your kids involved, mm -hmm. have them be a part of like the cooking and, and deciding mm -hmm. what we're going to eat. Like let them choose kind of what dinner is going to be and give them some options that are all mm -hmm. non-inflammatory. Like, Ooh, you know, here's, you could go into my book and be like, here's choose any of these options, choose a lasagna or whatever, like looks good. And let's make that for dinner. Right. So they have all kids, no matter what doesn't have, not even food any option when they have the power to choose mm -hmm. they will join you so much more quickly so if you give them options if you get them in the kitchen let them help so they feel empowered and they're really proud to like oh look at what i made of course i'm super excited to eat with you um if it's younger kids all kids all younger kids want to get big like it's something that they just they are so excited to be a big kid right so talking about like, oh, when I drink my water, when I eat this, I get so big and strong. You just ate this food. Let's see how fast you can run down the hallway. I do that all the time with my kids and they get so excited and they really think, and it's true, like the foods that they're eating and drinking enough water and taking care of themselves is making them big and strong and fast. It is. And I make sure there's a really direct correlation mm -hmm. for that. Um, and then with older kids and not even older, like I said, I had this conversation with my son starting at one and a half years of age. My daughter's four for the last two years at school. Like she tells her teachers, oh, that's processed sugar. I, I'm not going to have that. Like she's wow. fully like she is. She knows she's she educating knows. them. Yes. And I'm sure the and, kids listen because kids actually lo ra rather listen to their, you know, peers right. than the teacher or adults, you know, totally. so. it's so cool. It, it's such a ripple effect. I actually had um, one of Tasha's, there's a Halloween party coming up at his class. And I, there was an, like a parent email going out to everyone saying like, oh, will you guys make cookies or do this? And I 
where we played all saying, I'd love to make this. My son has some allergies. So like I'll make a mm -hmm. paleo clean ginger molasses cookie, which is in my cookbook. It's so good. Um, and then another parent responded saying like, oh, I've been watching what you're doing. I really want to make, do you have a sugar cookie recipe? And I was like, yeah, I'll totally, I have one. Let me pull it up on my computer. And I sent that to her. So it's so cool to see that mm -hmm. ripple effect, right? Um, and my son, when, whenever uh, there's a party, like I always make sure that his teachers have some like backup treats at school in mm -hmm. case it was an impromptu party or a birthday party. So he can, again, never feels left out. And the kid, he totally has conversations with kids about it. He's like, yeah, I'm a clean eating kid. And this is why. I, I love way. that. <laughs> wow. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Wow, that's, so having that's... those conversations, right? Like my son, who's eight, isn't perfect. There are times, very few and far between, but there are times, a couple times a year, that he has processed sugar, and and he is just having those conversations with him. Well, how do you feel now? Like, how does that make you feel? And he threw up on the bus. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he took a bunch of jelly beans from some. He didn't take them, but someone gave him a bunch of jelly beans that. He couldn't say no to because they were like Harry Potter jelly beans or something mm -hmm. on the bus last year and he threw up. And then I got called in from school and they were like, I think he's okay. He just ate sugar and, and he does body doesn't do well with that. I was like, Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had a talk and he's like, I know, mom. Like, I know mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't do well for me. So mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> it's just an opportunity for him to learn, you know? That's awesome. But at least, you know, they, they know. And I can't. Yeah. And that's how you said, I think, in the beginning that kids, you know, no matter for moms, for parents, for grandparents, don't think that, you know, oh, even like a little newborn babies, the kids are so amazing. They're so intelligent. They, they, they listening and maybe even they don't they're not talking, but like they 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 learning through other sensories and you know so just it's never too early to you know to educate them and it's yes yeah, like a ripple effect you you inspiring others you inspiring you know moms your neighbors your family you know you bring it share it with everybody so uh yeah and everybody please you know get get you know jenny's book a uh, piece of cake which is which is amazing how can people find you you know if they want to contact yeah, you so again you just... can find me um if you are interested in grabbing that book um again i will send all of the listeners here whether you're listening to the recording or the live version a free copy of my book so just a free copy in the comments below um and i will be sure to friend you on facebook and send you a free copy of the book and um if you're interested in if you're like oh i i have some chronic inflammation i have this chronic symptoms that keep coming up i've tried to do things or I just need someone to help me like work through what I need to do. I also um, will offer a free, um, like a health breakthrough session if you want to discuss and figure out just what's going on with your body. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, just send me a PM and let me know and we can set up a time to talk. That's awesome. And do you have a Facebook page? I know any like social yes. media that people so you can find me. People. You just uh, Jenny Carr Health, or you can um, just go to Jenny Carr, which I think I'm tagged here on mm -hmm. your um, Facebook page. I are you on post. Instagram, Snapchat? I don't know Twitter. There are so many. I'm so not good with social media. I'm like good yeah. with Facebook. Um, so I yeah. am on all of those. I just don't update it very often. I know it's like <laughs> I mean, it's so, I, I'm like I, it's a full time job to just yeah. be updating all you know. Yeah, yeah totally. So yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I think just, when the book is getting popular, then you're gonna have to like hire a team and I'm then they'll be updating. To. Yeah, I think yeah. so because I see this book in every household, you know, and oh, so this is so awesome. Thank you. Yeah, did I forget please. something? Do you shall we add something no, at the end? I don't think so, unless anyone has any questions. Yeah, let me see so if the if me. they're you know people putting the free, they excited, they watching, they want the the book, they want to share it. They said great information. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think we cover everything. So wait, if you're coming to New York City, let me know. So I would love to meet with you in person. And uh, if you want to even go for a hike or something where I live, because I live like half an hour from the city, it's, we have a lot of amazing places. And now the autumn is here. The, color, the leaves are changing. So it's really, oh, really beautiful. So, beautiful. Well, that so I can't fun. wait to meet you in person. But yeah, yes. congratulations again. And thank you so much, you know, for I know you're so busy, you know, of, you know, coaching, being a mom and, you know, doing promoting the book. So thank you so much, you know, for doing this interview for Olenka's Kitchen. And yeah, I'm so proud of you. So uh, well, it's an honor. And I feel the same way about you. So keep up the good work and let the inspiration just keep having that ripple effect, right?
Yes, awesome. So yeah, so nice talking to you. So have a nice evening. I don't know if you an hour behind me. I don't it, know what time. Um, it's four thirty here. Two hours. Okay. Over there. Okay. Go so. get my kids. <laughs> I've never been to Wyoming. One day I wanna, oh, I'm gonna. Come out yeah. So yeah. so have a nice evening and a thank nice you, weekend thank and you nice talking. For listening. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, please, you know, put in the comments, you know, free books. So then, you know, Jenny can send it to you. And yeah, if you have any more questions, you can send her the message finder on social media or Facebook. And you know, she'd be you know happy to talk to you. Okay. So good night, everyone. Goodbye. Love, love, light and fruits from Olenko's kitchen. And so nice having you, Jenny. Bye. 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 Piece of cake. Piece of cake. (laughs) This was a piece of cake. Yeah. I love the title. Such a cute title. Thank you. Like you said, you have such a nice personality. So you're so sweet. Well, likewise. Yes. I don't know if we still love.